Hey, good morning, pre-youth. Hope you are all doing well. Hope that you are looking forward to the Loop Show today. I absolutely love the Loop Show. Maybe I shouldn't admit that, but I really enjoy watching it. I think those guys are funny and I love everything that they talk about. And today we are continuing the series on who is God? It's a pretty big question. Who is God? And today we're looking at the point that God is deeper than rejection. And I think that is so true and so important to understand as well. And today's verse is one of my favourite verses of all time. It's John 3.16 and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. I love that verse. I love the fact that God is deeper than re rejection. And I love the loop show. So there's loads to love this morning. Hey, but why don't we head over now and get on with today's program. It's been great to see you. John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God gave us his son Jesus who gave his life on the cross so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And our only response to that sacrifice is to give ourselves to him in worship. But what does it mean to give ourselves to him in worship? That means to surrender all the things that we might be struggling with, whether it's with our friends or our family, or maybe to think of things that we're thankful for. It's surrendering all of these things to the one who gave us everything. So let's do that now as we worship Him together.
we're gonna write the best Christmas song ever. So we brought in the best songwriter we know. Who's it gonna be? Hang on for the loo! Four, three, two, one. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. Jamie, do you ever get frustrated around Christmas yes, time? Yes, I'm frustrated right now just trying to get this present wrap. It's that time of year where it feels like you can just throw a fruitcake out the window if you don't get everything just perfectly. I just feel a lot of pressure to get this thing wrapped correctly and it's just not happening. Well, do you think a life hack segment would help? Ugh. Let's go to the life hacks. What's up guys, my name is Hunter and in today's episode we're going to be learning how to gift wrap presents. Now this is something I wish I would have known when I was younger because I seriously used to use newspaper and duct tape to wrap my presents. Bruh. So here's what you're going to need. Some wrapping paper, some scissors, some tape, and of course a present. And optional, you can use some bows as well to put on top of your present once it's wrapped. All right, now that we've got all of our supplies, we wanna make sure that our present is in something easy to wrap like a box. If it's a weird shaped object, consider using a gift bag. All right, before we actually start wrapping, I like to take the tape and just make some pre-cut, just little pieces, just to make the process a little bit easier when we actually start wrapping our present. All right, now we're finally gonna roll our wrapping paper out and we're gonna put our present right in the middle. Now on the top here, we wanna have enough paper that actually covers most of the top, and we're gonna do the same on this side, just like that, and now we're gonna trim the extra paper. All right, once we've measured for the top, we're gonna to measure the sides, and the rule is we need to come up about three-fourths of the way, just like that, so we're gonna trim it, so the same thing happens on the other side. All right, once everything's trimmed up, we're gonna go ahead and tape the top using those pieces of tape we cut earlier. All right, now that we've got the top taped, it's time for the sides. We're gonna fold under like this. And make sure we're creasing. All right, now we're gonna do the exact same thing with the other side. All right, that's it. Everything's taped up, it's wrapped. It looks okay, it's not gonna be perfect. Mine definitely doesn't look perfect but it's the gift that counts, not how you wrap it. And I like to add one more little special thing on top, and that's a bow. And that's it, guys. That's how to wrap a present. Thanks so much for watching. We learned something new today. We learned something new. Now, practice those tips, but remember, the holidays don't have to be perfect. Today we're talking about that God is love and he loves you no matter what. So, gifts, check. Decorations, check. Now, all we need is our official Loop Show Christmas Carol. Oh, hello! Yes, yes. Hey. He's the are... best songwriter ever. You must only know one, but <laughs> we carry on. <laughs> All right, so, so what's the challenge? How are we gonna write this song? Here's what we're gonna do. This is how we're gonna write the best Loop Show Christmas Carol. So first thing we're gonna do is pick a key. What key should we? Well, I mean, since it's Christmas, we should be in the key of C. Clearly. I mean, carry on. Then we are going to write the lyrics using autocomplete and these prompts. So uh. first prompt is, hey everybody, let's. All right, hey everybody, let's get together soon and I'll send you some money. That's great. I, I okay. All I want for Christmas. Everybody's gonna think is you, but my not, that's not what autocorrect says. New job. <laughs> right. How can you afford the presents without a job? So mine is all I want for Christmas is my birthday. <laughs> Let's see what the phone's gonna say. All I want for Christmas is a. Uh, Christmas was the, one of the words. We're not going to pick that. Is a good day. Like, huh. like yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay, go next. Yeah. And Merry Christmas 
to to who? y'all. Oh, so it's a country song in C. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, there Christmas. aren't enough Christmas country songs. <sighs> there should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Merry Christmas to yeah, yeah, yeah. Need a yeah. backbeat, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Merry Christmas to, to ya. yeah. 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 Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. I it's, like it. Let's just say yeah. Yeah, everyone's Sounds in a rush. Great. You don't want to bob them down with too many The lyrics. hustle and the bustle. This is going to be a hit. I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> hey, everybody, let's go. I think we need to grab something on the way out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so Sometimes grab, grab some jingle wall. bells and... And tomorrow... Send you some money. Yeah, That's grab some perfect. jingle bells and send you some money. Perfect. Why are you some money? Some... Yeah. Apple Pay some money. Yeah. Venmo some money. Yeah. Cash App some money. PayPal some money. Dollar sign, your name. Yeah. All right, which one? Okay, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. What's up, guys? Caitlin here. And you've probably heard that God is love. But what does that really mean? If you turn on the radio or your favorite music streaming app, there's like a 99% chance that you'll hear a song about love. We sing about how love makes us feel like we're going crazy. Or how it's the most wonderful and magical feeling in the world. Or how we pine for love, but we can't have it from the one that we want. So the bad news. Sometimes love isn't unicorns and rainbows like we hear on the radio. Sometimes we get rejected and we feel totally unlovable. The good news, God's love is way deeper than rejection. He is literally love and his love has zero conditions. When's the last time something had no conditions? Humans, we have a lot of conditions, unfortunately. We are like, you need to be this tall to ride this roller coaster. Or you need to dress this way if you wanna be my friend. Or you can't have ever made a mistake. Uh, but that's impossible. Which is why God doesn't care how tall you are or what you're wearing. And most importantly, his love isn't conditioned by your mistakes. God loves everyone and everything just as they are. Spiders? Yup. That lady down the street who always smells like onions? For sure. My cat when he tries to eat paper and throws up everywhere? Absolutely. Okay, 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 but what about when I have really messed up? Like that time I cheated on my math test. Or that time I didn't invite Maria to my birthday party because people said that she was weird. Or that time I stole my brother's iPod and lied and told him I lost it instead. Yes, even when you feel like you have done the worst thing and you are at your most unlovable. God loves you so completely and perfectly. You don't have to be perfect because God is. So take a deep breath. <sighs> the pressure's off to be perfect. God loves you no matter what. Eggnogs. The song Angels We Have Heard on High is about the angels coming to the shepherds and saying, hey, sheep dudes, Jesus is born. He's over that away. If you sing the chorus correctly, how many times do you sing the O note in Gloria? Is it A, 16, B, 12, C, 14, or D, 20? Let's test it out. Gloria. That's A, 16 times. Some of you are out there, you're embellishing, it's like, Gloria. I heard you. Can you imagine what it sounds like to hear an angel singing? I'm sure it's more majestic than a 16 note Gloria. And guess who got to hear it? The shepherds. Not the most important people, not the well-adjusted winners, the last of the last, the lowly, smelly shepherds. God's love still sings. It, you have to listen for it. It's deeper than the love songs that you hear on the radio, and it's deeper than the songs that you sing to yourself. His love still sings sweetly o'er the plains if you listen for it. Listen closely, and you'll hear Gloria. We all know the main cast of The Christmas Story. We've got Mary and Joseph, and of course, baby Jesus, but when Luke sat down to write his account of Christmas, he made sure to mention an unlikely group of people. They were sheep farmers or shepherds. And at that time, they were overlooked and avoided. Nobody thought they deserved attention. The night Jesus was born, the shepherds were watching their sheep do whatever sheep do at night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. This was terrifying. The shepherds and their flocks were speechless. Seeing them tremble, the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. In other words, chill out. I've got a special message and I need you to share. Their jaws dropped. Not only was an angel singing to them, but they rarely got asked to do anything important. The angel continued and gave them specific details on how to find Jesus in the crowded town of Bethlehem. They jotted down Bethlehem, Savior, Baby, 
manger on whatever shepherds quickly ride on. Then it got kicked up a notch. The angel's song hit a crescendo and the sky filled with a huge angel choir. The shepherds rocked out to a song like no other. When the angels left, the shepherds looked around and said, you heard the song, let's head to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. Because when an angel says go, you go. They went to Bethlehem, saw Jesus had arrived, met his sweet parents and went out to tell everyone they knew the savior was born. Everyone was amazed by the story the shepherds told. When God wrote his musical birth announcement, he didn't deliver it to popular celebrities or the local news. He gave his song to average shepherds who were minding their own business head down and rejected. He wanted forgotten people to be the first to hear the good news. Jesus is here. Guys, we did it. We were challenged to write a song using autocorrect. The phone helped us. We wrote it in C because, I mean, Christmas, of course. You brought the triangle. Brilliant. You guys ready? Yeah. It's a smash hit. Here we go. Hey, everybody, let's go. Grab your jingle bells and I'll send the money. Hey, everybody, let's go. Christmas loop makes me happy to see you again. I mean, I'm so happy. So happy. Happy to see you again. The happiest. <laughs> so happy. Because Christmas is the season to get there around noon. Punctuality matters. Christmas is the season to get the girls and the fam to be there. All I want for Christmas is a good day. Good day. And a new job. New job. Just give me my birthday. Birthday. And a new job this Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to ya. Oh, little town of the year, Merry Christmas to ya, Merry Christmas to ya. Oh, little town, come on, say, Merry Christmas to ya, Merry Christmas to ya. Oh, little town of the year, Merry Christmas to ya, Merry Christmas to ya. All I want for Christmas is a good day, come on, say, and a new job. You got it, come on, my birthday, birthday. And a new job! Oh, I this is a good day! Good day! And a new job! New job! Just give me my birthday! Birthday! And a new job this Christmas! Very demanding Christmas song, but I think it's pretty awesome, actually. Yes! Just give me a good day, and my birthday, and a new job. Yeah! So happy Christmas to you. So I know that right now some of you are going, man, I am imperfect. I've had so much sin in my life and made so many mistakes. There's no way that I could possibly deserve God's love. Well, you would be right. You actually don't deserve God's love, but neither do I. I've probably sinned more than you, and I still get to receive God's love because God's love for us is unconditional. His love for us has nothing to do with how much we've done right or wrong. He just simply loves us. His love for us goes so deep, and the grace and forgiveness that he's shown us in our lives is so wide and covers so much. God is deeper than rejection. Check out what the Bible says about God's love in John 3, 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Everyone has access to God and everyone has access to God's love because God is love. Check out how my pastor, Craig Rochelle, describes God's love. So may I try to help you understand how much your God loves you. If you've ever seen a child walk or ever had a child learn to walk, I love it when they're nine months old, 10 months old, they do the drunk Frankenstein and then they fall down. What do you do if you're a father? You don't look at the child that fell and say, you pathetic, no good, can't even walk three step kids, I'm trading you in for someone more coordinated. No, you don't. What you do is you hug them and you love them, and you say, great job, you took a step, now let's do it again. And whenever they fall, you continue to love them, and when they do something good, you cheer them on. Your Father in heaven is not withdrawing his love when you fall short. He's cheering you on when you get it right. He is continuing to love you because 
There is nothing you can do to cause him to love you more. And there's nothing you can do to cause him to love you less because love is not something he does. Love is who he is. It is, it is his essence. And so, step into it. While we were still sinning, scripture says, Christ died for us. That's how much he loves you. Step into it. Be mature and complete in the unconditional, undeserved, unreserved love that our Father has for you. The pressure's off. Just give me a good day. Good day. Oh, beautiful. And a new job. New job. And my birthday. My birthday. This Christmas. We did it, guys. I mean, you could sing it slow, you could sing it fast, anywhere in between. Medium. That's the sign of a great song. Now, our song is a hit. This week, remember, God is love, and he loves you without expectations. The pressure is off. You don't have to have the perfect tree or the perfect present or even the perfect song. Which this song is an exception to that, but you're right, you're right, you're right. Think of all the incredible ways that God loves you. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. God loves you. And because of Jesus, you're enough. God, I thank you so much for every student in this room. God, I pray that they would leave this place feeling that and knowing that truth. That they are loved by you and they're worthy. As we continue on in an attitude of prayer with heads still bowed and eyes still closed, I feel like there's some of you in this room, you're having a hard time believing that. Maybe you think about all the things you wish you hadn't have done or all the insecurities you feel about yourself. Maybe you don't feel enough. Here's the truth. None of us are. We all have this thing in our life and it's called sin. What is sin? It's the things that we do that hurt God's heart and keep us separated from Him. But God, He couldn't stand that. That's why He sent His perfect Son, Jesus, to die on a cross for you and for me, to raise from the grave three days later, defeating our sin, defeating our insecurities. Through Jesus, we could have a relationship with God. We could be made new. We could be forgiven. And if here today, you realize that's what I need. That's what I want. I am ready to give my life to Christ. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. That's awesome. We're gonna join with those who are raising their hand and we're gonna pray out loud together. So repeat after me, dear God, I recognize that I'm broken and I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God that you died and rose again for me. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to make me brand new. Thank you for your forgiveness and thank you for your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. If that was you, I'm so proud of you. That is the best decision you could ever make. And now you might be wondering what happens from here. What happens from here is that you tell somebody, let people celebrate with you, tell a parent, tell a leader, because this is the most important decision you can ever make and it's worth throwing a party.
Let's celebrate, for it's Christmas. 